see here. Hi, Kai. Oh, I'm sorry, kid. <laughs> All right. So, kind of fast forwarding through the book. Uh, Riley and Isla are about to head to a warehouse of hackers. Their leader is T40. Riley headed for a staircase on the side of the building. We ascended the stairs until we reached a white painted steel door. He pressed the buzzer. A man's voice sounded over an intercom. Yeah? Riley said, Tenor sent me. The bolt on the door clicked open with a heavy thunk. The door swung open, re revealing an anteroom with signs on the walls asking us to please wait in several languages. The entrance shut soundly behind us. From a side door, a man entered. His open bathroom revealed a faded band t-shirt and plaid boxer shorts. He focused on my friend and said, you? Rye. Like the bread, right? Hard to chew and kind of funny tasting. <laughs> the disheveled man chuckled to himself. Something like that, Riley replied. His lips formed into a smile that didn't meet his eyes. Come on, T40 is expecting you. We followed the man into a room reminiscent of a college dorm. A stank of stale sweat, mold, and something sweet. Worn out couches, easy chairs, and tables took up every available space. Food wrappers and takeout boxes were scattered about the room. In every seat, a young person lay slumped, asleep, or typed frantically on a keyboard of jellied plastic, or on the air itself. There were about a dozen in all, many of them malnourished or unkempt, and none of them older than 20. My turn at the meat world, right? The man in the robe looked over his shoulder, grinning. A small green light flickered from a device at the base of his skull. Meat? One of the teens sat up, his glassy eyes focused on us. Pizza dude! It's not pizza, clientele. Our guide led us to a door beyond the bodies and not twice. After a brief pause, he opened the door and waved us into a bedroom where three people lay on the bed, their eyes glossed over, their hands moving invisible objects in the air. In a corner recliner sat a 30-something man with a few days beard growth who raised his head to us and said, quickly. He too made hand motions, but not as frantically as his friends on the bed. Riley spoke to T-40. We need ID and a weapons permit for her. Fully legit, will pa pass full inspect, no halfways. Full or null? T-40 opened his eyes, revealing metal replacements. I took a step back, startled. 48 hours, double for speedier. What's the name? Riley turned to me, waiting for my answer. Wait, what? I asked them both. You want my name? My real name or my fake one? Uh, I searched Riley's eyes. He lifted a single brow and gave a sidelong glance to the man with the silver eyes. Oh, what does it matter? Jennifer Murphy, I said. More a question than a statement. I expected him to assume I was giving a false name. Either way, my grandmother's would do well enough. T-40's fingers made a tapping motion in the air. We'll need it sooner, Riley said. I'll pay. The man stopped gesturing and focused on us. Done. 23 hours and 58 minutes or less, or no fee. He closed his lids over those disconcerting eyes. Riley turned to leave, but stopped to make another comment to T-40, who looked half awake. Your security is a bit lacking, Tracer. The man smirked. Then you missed the five gun placements and gas dispensers. Rye? Right. Not bad. We left, and as we descended the stairs, Riley caught my confused, speculating look. He focused forward and said, in a world full of excess, they have retreated into the world of the virtual unreality, foregoing all that is real to you and me. Well, a little bit more for my daughter who dressed as a character she likes.